What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to automatically fill PDF forms using Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn how to automatically fill up PDF forms using Python. And this can be useful in order to automate a number of different business tasks or use cases. So for example, you might have a database full of customers or clients or contacts, and you want to send customized invoices or contracts or proposals to them. And you want to do that using PDF forms. So you have a PDF form with different fields and you want to fill them up dynamically with the content from the database or from a CSV file or from an Excel sheet. It doesn't really matter, but you can automate the process of doing that. And this is what we're going to learn how to do in this video today. Now for this, I have prepared a very simple uh, template PDF file. I can open it up here. It's literally just a couple of labels and four text boxes and one checkbox. So I can show the forms here in my PDF uh, reader and I can then, you know, manually enter some stuff like ID one, uh, some address and I can name a price of 500. Let's say it's dollars. And then I can add some date here, something, I don't know, like, like this. Uh, and then I can accept the conditions and I can save this now. And now it's stored in the template. So let's say now I have a list of a 1000 customers, and I don't want to do this all manually, I want to do this in an automated way using Python. This is what we're going to learn how to do in this video today. Now you can either use an actual file that you want to try this on, or you can create your own file. Uh, I used this service here, they're not sponsoring the video. This is just uh, the first result I found on Google, maybe there are better tools out there. Uh, I basically just started here with a blank document and dragged in some text fields. Uh, you can just craft your own PDF file like this, then you can also click on them and you can see what their field name is. This is important because those are the things that you're going to then target in your application. Um, and for the checkbox, you also have this additional thing, which is important, the field value. This is uh, what you can have here once the value is checked, this is going to be the value of the field is just uh, in, in this particular tool. But of course, you can also use any PDF file that contains forms. So I'm going to empty all of these fields now. And we're going to see how we can work with that uh, PDF file in Python. Now for this, we're going to need an external Python package called fill PDF. So we're going to actually open up the terminal and we're going to type pip or pip three, install fill PDF. And this is a very convenient package that we can use here, in order to just easily uh, locate the fields and then also fill them up and save uh, the results into a new PDF file. So what we're going to do is we're going to say first of all, a simple example, I'm going to import date time, and we're going to say from fill PDF import fill PDFs. And then what I want to do is I want to get all the form fields that I have. So I can say form fields is equal to fill PDFs dot get form fields. And I just have to provide the path template dot PDF. And what I want to have here is not the values, I want to have only the keys. Because if I do it like that, if I then print form fields, uh, you will see that I get a dictionary with the identifiers of the individual text boxes and the values, and I only want to have the keys. So I actually want to say keys, like this, then I only have the keys, but I also want to have this as a list. So I can um, access individual fields here using an index. And then I have the list of identifiers. Again, if you change them in the application, um, they will have a different name or in your PDF, they will also have a different name. But the order is already enough for us to know which one uh, is which one. So we have them from top to bottom. And then we have the checkbox in the end, it doesn't really matter what the exact names are here for us specifically now. Now let's say I want to fill this form up with some sample data. Let's say I have a customer ID, which is going to be ID one. Let's say I have uh, what was the second thing an address. Let's say it's my street 20. And let's say we have a price of 500. I'm using this, uh, I'm, I'm passing this now as a text here, or I'm defining this to be a text here, because uh, that is just going to be a textual value in the text box, then we're going to say the date is equal to date time, date time today. And accept is going to be equal. Now this is important, except has to be equal to the value that is accepted in your specific checkbox. Now this is the one that I showed you in the tool and the online tool. Um, 
basically when you click on this here, that's the value here for this application now. Uh, you will see which one it is if you try to pass an invalid one. So if I just pass anything here, you're going to see that this is not going to work. So what we want to do now is we want to use a data dictionary to map the form field keys to the values. And we do that by saying data dictionary is equal. And then we can just say we have here the form fields. So we can say form fields zero, the first text box will have the customer ID. And then we can continue to do that. So I can just copy paste. And then here I can change these, I can change this to address, I can change this to uh, price, I can change this to date. And here I can change this to accept. Now we're going to get a problem here, but we can try it so that we can see which values are accepted. We can print also the data dictionary, this is what it looks like in the end. And this is now what we pass to the fill PDF package. So we say fill PDFs dot write fillable PDF. And then we use as an input PDF, the template PDF. But as an output PDF, we use some new PDF or new dot PDF. And the changes are in the data dictionary. So this is the line of code that does all the magic. Now when I run this, you will see this is not an option options are and then I see what is actually an option. So I can actually change this to be that this is the checkbox being checked. Otherwise, if I don't want to check it, I can just say none. So this also works. So I can run this now. And I have my new PDF file, I can open it here in the file explorer. And you will see that the data is in there. And if I show the forms here, you can also see that this is checked and accepted. So this is how you can do that. Now let's go ahead and try to do it on a larger scale. Let's say I have this data CSV file, I generated it with chat GPT. So this is just customer ID, address, price, date, accept, basically the same thing we did here manually, but I have a data set. So I have ID one, ID two, ID three, then some streets here, then some prices here, some dates here, and then also some yes, no acceptance. Um, that now I want to use as a basis for multiple invoices. So how can we do that? First of all, of course, you need to have pandas on your system. So pip or pip three install pandas if you don't have it like this. And then you want to import it. So you want to say import pandas as PD. And also we want to import OS uh, up here. So what we're going to do now instead of defining these fields manually, is we're going to say the data frame is going to be equal to PD read CSV. I want to read the CSV file, which is data CSV. And then I want to say for index row in DF itero. So I'm going to iterate over the rows. And I'm going to do actually, I don't want to delete all of this now. So let me go back to it. I'm going to say again, DF equals PD read CSV data CSV. I'm going to still do for index row in DF iteros. But now I want to do this basically but with the values from the rows. So I want to use actually here row customer ID. And here I want to use row address. And here I want to use row price. And here row date. And finally, here now I want to do something else here, I want to use um, yes underscore X say uh, X C K Y, which is my checked if row accept is equal to yes, else none. Um, and that is now the assignment here, I can now go ahead and do it like this, the data dictionary is now that. And for each row, I'm going to do all this. So I'm going to do here now, uh, OS path, join. And what I want to do is I want to join an invoices directory with some uh, F string here, which is going to be the customer ID underscore invoice. So and of course, we want to close this, there you go. And of course, for this, we need to create an invoices directory. So we have an invoices directory. And basically, we just load each individual row, we create a PDF file, which is filled based on a template and the data dictionary, and then we store it in invoices. 
And then depending on the customer ID, it's going to be a different file invoice PDF. Run this and you will see we have 30 PDFs filled up so I can go and open them up here in my file explorer and here we can open up one. There you go. You can see in this case, it's checked and we have some data in here. In this case, it's uh, also checked. Now, let me just see if that is. Uh, okay, I messed this up. Uh, they should not be checked. So this is just going to be accept like this. There you go. Run this again. Now, one of them should not be checked, I guess. So this one is still checked, but 29 should not be checked because it has a no. There you go. It's empty. I can check it, but it wasn't checked by default. Because in a data set I have for 29, I have a no, so it's not checked. But you can see I created all these invoices here using Python based on a CSV file. And this is how you can automate filling up PDF files. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you for watching. See you in the next video and bye.